welcome everybody and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Vibe Selection. I am your host Kyra and to end off this hot girl summer we are nearing the end of July everybody and today I have joining me country pop singer, songwriter, podcast host, podcast host and influencer Christy McGroft you're joining me today how are you doing I'm great thank you thank you for having me how are you I'm doing well I'm doing well so without further ado I want to get into my first question with you because I know we're a little low on time today but you're originally from Canada and typically, I don't think of people that are from Canada as liking country music. I always think of everybody being from the South. But I know country music is universal. Anybody can love country music. Totally. So what inspired your love for country music? Mm. Growing up, I was a huge Shania Twain fan. She was like my super idol. I just loved singing her music. And it's so funny because looking back, I found her music so challenging to sing. Mm. And I was always like, oh, I want to sing this. And I wish I could hit those notes, but I can't. And it's so cool now to be able to sing all those songs mm-hmm. and sing in pitch and in the right key and all the all those things. Mm-hmm. Just to see the growth that has come from practice and persistence and patience. And I just love kind of reflecting back on younger Crystal and what I couldn't do at the time. And, and now looking at, oh, cool, I can do that now. And I think that's a really good message and motto to live by. I just persistence you can do anything you want absolutely that was kind of my my initial phase of love for the country music yeah I love that yeah. and Shania, she's such a wonderful artist so that that's a good step in stone to start off with loving Shania Twain and then you know having her as your foundation for country music because she's a country music legend so yes she is yeah absolutely yeah. so you describe your sound of music as pop with the blend of Carrie Underwood Mary Morris and Christina Aguilera. So what about these three lady styles do you like the most? Yeah, I love that each of them bring out emotion in their music, but yet through lyrically, melodically, through the music, all of the trifecta of all the good stuff that makes us feel, I feel like they all bring that out. And they're all powerhouse, like Christina Aguilera, powerhouse singer. I just love the vocal runs and the range and how she can sing so many different styles of music and you're just empowered by it. And same thing with Carrie Underwood, you know, you just hear the power behind that voice and it just, that power of the vocal just empowers you to want to do anything, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I love me some Christina Aguilera, honey. She can sing her butt down. She, right? She's a vocal powerhouse, definitely for so sure. Good. Voice of an angel. So that's definitely, a, you know, some three ladies that would be, are great that you have on your list. So yeah, as far, as far as styles. Yeah, and then Maren Morris is just an amazing songwriter and the songs that she mm-hmm. shares and stories that she tells, I just, I love the songwriting aspect of, of that as well. Yeah, so yeah. as an independent artist, what would you say are some of the pros and cons of being an independent artist? Because you're a little different, you got your, your own record label, right? I run everything independently through myself, yeah. Yeah. So you have your yeah. record label, you do all your pressing, which is very unique. Not a lot of artists do a lot of pressing anymore, you know? So what would you say are some of the pros and cons to doing all that? Yeah. It's having creative control over everything that I'm doing is, is a huge, huge win. That's definitely a pro. Um, I'm really fortunate. I have a great team of people that work with me. So it's not just me running around in 20 different hats every day. I mean, I, I put the hat on to communicate with the people in charge of that area, but um, it's very important to have a good team of people around you that can support your vision. And Mm -hmm. you can only have a team though, once you have a clear, strong vision of who you are and what you want to put out into the world. And I think, you know, sometimes people think, oh, I want to do this and I need a team of people right now, but I have no idea what I'm doing. So I need a team of people to figure it out for me. Then you lose the authenticity. And for me, it was just really about how can I learn how to do everything mm-hmm. and, you know, figure out where my strengths are and my zone of genius is lie and mm-hmm. focus on that and then have people fill in the blanks of all the areas that, you know, maybe aren't my strongest suit and have people lift that up, but still having a great understanding. So I think, you know, just being the owner of, of my company and having a great team is, is really a wonderful way to keep the creative vision flowing and keeping everyone in the same kind of alignment with the vision and um honestly I think you know the con of everything is um 
it's, you know, it's tricky to say, I would say time. It's very time consuming to run your own business. But, Mm -hmm. but I think about it, I'm like, well, it would be time consuming to monitor someone else, you know, running your own business. So I think either way it's time is still lost. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. How long did it take you to build your team and to create your vision for how you wanted your team to, how you wanted your company to, how you wanted your um, company to be ran ultimately? Yeah, it's um, definitely been a long journey. I I started doing music Well, I released my first album in 2006. So um, it hasn't been until kind of, I'd say the past couple of years that I've really brought some key players on to help me formulate my, my vision and brand and Branding is such a huge part. Marketing, all of that kind of stuff is a huge aspect of the music industry. And, and just recently, we started the company Simply Socials Management. So we do um, graphic design, social media management, a little bit of press stuff, um, do anything digital marketing. And I've learned all the tools to launch that from doing it all myself for music. And so now we're in a position we can help other artists, other companies um, build their brands and marketing and help them get their their vision clear. And yeah. and yeah, so I think it's just a patient process of when the right time comes, I think you're going to have the people that you need. So, mm-hmm. and in a world of social media today, you know, I know a lot of people brand themselves on social media, but what are some ways that you feel like are very effective for you as an artist in branding yourself? Right. I think for me, anything pink and sparkly yes, is just yes, yes. my vibe. Yes, you see the vibes. <laughs> it's just my yeah. vibe. So I love um, using those colors as a, a symbol of strength and femininity. So for me, it's not just, oh, pink is pink. It's pink is my power color. And that's what lights me up to stand strong in my confidence and my authenticity. So mm-hmm. I think being authentic on social media is very important because people can really see through um, anything that's not real and not you. So when you're online, I don't connect with people that look fake. I connect with those who are sharing a message of whatever their story might be and sitting in with that authenticity, I think is really important. So I would say that that is the key message for socials. I love that. And you know what? The background is also giving me very Mariah Carey glitter vibes. Oh, yeah. I love Mariah Carey. too. (laughs) She's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. So being a female in a male dominated industry, do you feel you have to work a little bit harder to prove yourself as an artist? Yeah, I think um, you can look at it like that. But I also really just try to zone into what is my mission. This is not a competition. This is a experience of me doing what I love. And I'm just fortunate enough to be able to make a career out of doing what I love every day. And when I stay focused in on that, all the other stuff kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, just as a side note, just this past year has really given myself a really great opportunity to focus in on what is it I want? What are my goals? How am I going to access those goals without the outside noise of what are they doing or what's working for this person or this person or that person? And when you can start to tune out the world and really tune into your inner light, then that's when things really start moving. And that's when you really start to understand what it is you need and things just show up for you because you're in alignment with your truth. So I think that's the biggest biggest thing, you know, to answer your question about, do I feel like I need to work harder? Well, no, I feel like I need to show up for myself every day. And I feel like as long as I stay in alignment with that truth, then nothing really, nothing else matters. Absolutely. And you know what, during this past year with the pandemic and everything, I know that has been very hard for a lot of artists, especially because, you know, a lot of artists get a lot of generate a lot of their money from touring and so forth. Yeah. So what would you say are some lessons that you've learned during this pandemic? I know you just mentioned one where you're able to kind of get into alignment and focus a little bit more on where you wanted to be and the goals that you wanted to set out for yourself. But what are some lessons that you feel like you've learned during this pandemic? Yeah, that would be probably the biggest one is just quieting the noise out the external and and really focusing on the internal because we get so easily distracted, especially in the creative industry you know, always kind of looking at what's trending and as opposed to what is trending for me. (laughs) And I think that's, that's a huge thing because we're all so unique and individual and there's so much space for all of us to shine bright, but 
only if you're shining your own light. And that's kind of my, feel like my theme of the day is just like your inner light, inner light shine. A huge thing for me this year as well was just, you know, allowing myself no expectations. So taking away expectations of results and just allowing things to unfold how they should. And I think if we can move forward with less expectation and more just enjoying the experience and the journey and just allowing things to unravel. I mean, I released a song in Australia during this time and I had never released an international song like that before. And to develop a fan base and a market and have my single on MTV and CMT and, you know, all the commercial country radio stations over there, I never would have expected that to happen. And I, when I put this out during a pandemic, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen and I'm not going to put any attachment to what happens, but I kind of like one of those things, just go with your gut, put it out there and, and allow it to be what it is. And when you do that, when you follow that, things just happen the way they're supposed to be. And I think if we lived our lives a little more like that moving forward, I know for me, I'm definitely going to pick up on that lesson and, Mm -hmm. and carry that forward, take away the expectation and just allow the process to happen and enjoy it on the way. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, being in the music industry, it's a very here today, gone tomorrow type of industry where there's so many people that want to make it here, but there's only a certain amount of people that are ultimately going to make it. So competition is very scary. You know, competition is very Mm -hmm. in the industry. So like you said, focusing on yourself and what you're good at and not looking at what other people are doing and just go for it. You know, I think that's definitely important. I think that it's, it's so important and really just, you know, narrowing in on what is my version of success? What is success to me? Exactly. Not what's success to this person here or that person there, because that's not yours. Mm-hmm. What, what do you want? What makes you light, light up, you know? Yeah. And I also think that's definitely another pro of being an independent artist. You know, yeah. when you're in, a, when you're assigned to a major label, it's all about what's out there already. And how could you be on the same level as every other artist? And here it's about being authentic and finding your own. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So your song about a boy, which is your latest song out, is a female empowerment song about a confident woman who is content about being alone, but at times longs for companionship when she sees, you know, little little lovey-dovey scenes on the screen. So you also pose a question of why does every song have to be about a boy? So why do you feel it's important for women to come into their own sense of power and control outside of a relationship? Yeah, and I think that comes back to just my whole kind of theme of the day of, you know, when you know who you are and when you know what you want, you can stand in your power and you can stand in your authenticity. And and that's when the right people are drawn to you. And that's when, you know, relationship-wise, you don't want somebody that drains you. You want somebody that, empowers you and if you don't feel empowered yourself you cannot ever expect that to come from anybody else because no one can you is always going to lift you up and keep you up you have to have that power to stay lifted and then Mm -hmm. surround yourself with people that can you know elevate that light and I think I think that's really important to to stand in your power and know what you want and not be afraid to express yourself I think that's that's the biggest thing. And I think for me in my life, I've had a lot of challenges with, you know, not listening to my own voice and being caught up in, oh, what do they want me to say? Or what do they want to hear? Or, you know, what should it sound like? Or what should it look like? And you can really get caught in that external voices of other people. And so it's just really important for me to, you know, really stand in my own power and really listen to the voices that I have in my thoughts and, and not be afraid to express those. Mm -hmm. And you just posed a good uh, point right there when you said that, you know, you stifled your own voice at one point in time. So what was Mm. the particular situation where that occurred and how did you overcome that obstacle? I think it's happened, you know, consistently through many years of my life and just being afraid to acknowledge even the, the parts of yourself that you struggle with and or the hardships that you've had in life. And, and sometimes it's easier to quiet those voices and just keep going instead of stopping and looking at the voices and dealing with the voices and telling, you know, coaching yourself or, you know, getting help and talking to people or talking about it. And just even having conversations like this, just to remind people that it's okay not to be perfect and it's okay not to be okay, Mm -hmm. but it's not okay to hide that part of yourself. And, 
And for me growing up, it was, you know, here's an example. I used to use a fake singing voice when I was growing up because I was afraid what people would think of me. And I would rather them not like me for a fake voice than to not like me for my real voice. And so it was easier to put on a facade than it was to just be, be me. Ultimately, it's not easier to do that because you're living a lie. <laughs> so Exactly. Yeah. Okay, you're a, a Willy Vanilli or something. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's the actual voice on the record? This isn't what's going on in this live performance she's doing. <laughs> yeah, it, well, exactly. I mean, you can't do that as a professional. I mean, I was like 12, exactly. 12 to 14 yeah. and, you mm-hmm. know, just afraid of being who I was because I wouldn't be loved. And I think that's the struggle that a lot of people go through is just not being, not feeling good enough. And so we do things, our actions and our reactions to those thoughts take us on paths that aren't our truth. And I think I've had many experiences in life going down different roads that aren't in alignment with who I am and my values, just because I was afraid of looking at who I really was. So as soon as I started doing that, I did my yoga teacher training um, probably about 10 years ago now. And Mm -hmm. that really helped open, open me up and kind of look at who is crystal, you know, and, and how can we accept her a little bit more? And I think personal development for everybody is a really important thing to do because that's the only way you're going to get in alignment with who you need to be. If you, if you stop and you look in the mirror and you accept your flaws and you accept the things that you're awesome at and just that full form of self-acceptance. And it's a daily, it's a daily work. <laughs> it's not a light switch, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, the, the greatest part is that, you know, you're a singer and you're able to put a lot of your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and securities into your songs because you're a singer yeah. and a songwriter. So I think that's another good way of overcoming those obstacles as well. You know? That's something I love about music is just having that outlet to express and and not only to express something that I'm feeling, but to create a platform where other people can listen to it and be reminded that they're not alone in a feeling. Because sometimes we can feel so isolated and on our own with a feeling. And when you hear if somebody else is going through the same thing, it kind of makes you feel a little less weird and a little more, a little more uh, human. same, same human. Exactly. And then, you know, also as a singer, a lot of people put you on this pedestal, like you said, of perfection. So a lot of times people don't always think that you have the same emotions or you're going through the same things that other people are going through. So like you said, it's nice to know that people, when you're putting that out there, they're realizing that you are just like them and you are all just human. Our jobs are different, but we're all just the same, you know? Yeah, we are all just, we are all the same. And I think that's something that's really come to light over the past year is just this whole world has been going through Mm -hmm. a similar feeling of isolation and Mm -hmm. um, whatever emotions that spikes in people. And just all the conversations I've had with with individuals from all over the world, it's just this constant similarity of how we're all feeling. And that just really reminded me of how how connected and how we are all just human. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what do you feel like is the best remedy to get over a breakup? Oh, self-care. I would always, I would say self-care is your remedy for any issue, any issue in life, just taking care of yourself, filling your cup up. I think when you go through um, breakups or trauma in life in general, there's a piece of your world that just feels a little off kilter. And so whatever you can do to rebalance your kind of scale there to make yourself feel a little more even and full and allow yourself that time to get to know yourself again, because you know, if you're in a relationship like that, that ends sideways, mm-hmm. then usually you've lost yourself a little bit along the way. I find um, mm-hmm. just from talking with people and watching experiences, I think, you know, when you're in a situation where you have to do this in part ways, I think there's something that happens within you that where you've lost yourself or a piece of yourself. And you just need to go on that self-discovery process to, to mm-hmm. just come back into alignment. And and this self might be different than the self it was at the start of that relationship. And so it's just rediscovering who you are in that, in that time. Evolution. Absolutely. We're always shifting. Absolutely. And the, the most important thing about us being on this planet, I feel like, is evolution and then growing. It's like you have, like, like they always say, you always have certain people in your life for seasons and different reasons. 
And so not every breakup has to be like a terrible thing. Like, oh my God, you know, this was horrible. Like, what are you actually learning from that situation? You know, exactly. it's good or bad, they're all lessons and everything. Totally. Yeah. Just be aware of what's going on around you because we're on this journey to continuously learn. So pick up what you can. Yes. So you also host Live With Love. And I know you said it's, it's not a foundation. So I know that it's geared toward helping women achieve their dreams. So can you tell yeah. me a little bit more about what that is and how you help other women um, achieve their dreams? Absolutely. So not only am I a singer, but I'm a certified nutritional health coach and personal trainer. I have a bar, I bear bar program called the bar movement. And I do teacher trainings for um, other bar teachers to, to teach classes. Uh, I do yoga, meditation, sound bowl healing, all the good things. I talk about self-care and I talk about the inner light stuff a lot today. And it's just really important to me that we tap into that truth that we each have individually. And so Live With Love is my company that I offer on-demand classes. So there's a library of hundreds of, of fitness videos and meditation videos. And we also do daily classes on Zoom. So you can pop in and do a bar class or a hit class or meditation, sound bowl healing. Mm -hmm. uh, so all sorts of things. And we have all sorts of membership styles that you can access, um, workbooks, anything that has to do with self-care, self-love. We've got it. We've got it there. That's awesome. So yeah. are you, are you planning on take expanding it outside of it just being online? Like I know the pandemic's going on and a lot of people are just you know, still trying to keep their distance or whatnot, but do you plan on maybe having like a studio where people actually go to, to do that? Or, you know what? I love the concept of online community. For me, it's so great to be able to connect with people all over the world. So, you know, if you're in Australia, you can't come come to my class because you're in Australia but if you're online mm -hmm. anyone from anywhere in the world can attend and and be a part of this global community which I think is so so cool that we can access such a large group of people mm -hmm. um and actually this was my business plan all along to to be an online studio Ooh. so six years ago we were um in Nevada filming yoga videos to build this platform and Mm -hmm. And where I am, we would do live workshops and classes and in in-person events. Mm -hmm. um, but the pandemic actually just really drove it to to have to had to be online. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a blessing in, in itself for me to be able to have my vision come to life in kind of an obscure way. But yeah. yeah. But in the future, definitely uh, retreats. That's something that's that's going to be coming soon as well. So that's awesome. Yeah. Everybody better be on the lookout for that, y'all. Y'all check that's it out. <laughs> so actually um go online to sign up for classes yeah livewithlove.ca and on there you will see all the info that you need it's it's very self-explanatory sounds good so yeah. I know you're very big on women empowerment so what is your takeaway on why you feel like women have been underestimated and overlooked within our society for so long I think just as a, a group we've taken a long time to get to this place where we can use our voices with confidence and step into the work role and, and all just how our lives are all shifted a little bit to, you know, women no longer have to stay at home and take care of the kids and cook the meals and, you know, do all those typical things that many years ago was expected. And, and now things have kind of shifted and roles have shifted a little bit. And I find it so cool to watch just how we've, evolved so much from, um, you know, however many years ago into where we're at today with women stepping into their power and using their voices and, you know, standing up for their truth and what they want to do. And, and I think the more we can do that, the more we can inspire just everybody, whatever, regardless of your age, your sex, your race, whatever you are, be you and stand proud in who you are and use your voice and, and the more we can collectively do that as a society, I think is, is very empowering and on so many different levels, not just for women, but for, for everybody. Yeah. So what are some ways you feel a woman that is, that might be struggling with their own identity or a sense of self can regain control and power in their own lives? Mm -hmm. Make a list of things that you love to do make mm -hmm. a list of things that you're good at doing and make a list of people that inspire you to to do those things mm. and when you can kind of see that on paper 
okay, this is what I like. This is my, this is what I'm good at. And these are the people that support me. You know, don't go to telling your, your dreams and your ambitions to somebody who's going to say to you, you're crazy. Why are you doing that? Don't like, no, yeah. <laughs> you know, you want to stick with those people, share your experiences and, and, you know, your struggles or your ambition with the people that empower you to be more in alignment with who you are. I think that's, it's really important, but really knowing what it is that you want is a huge thing. And, and sometimes we don't know until we sit down and journal and write things out and write things down. And so journaling would be a huge, a huge help. I, I always find, but talking about it, finding a mentor in the same kind of field that you want to, you know, work in or do things in, I think it's really important as well. And, you know, speaking of journaling, I usually, yeah. so I do journal, but I also like to journal my dreams. A lot of people yeah. realize how your dreams hold a lot of like answers for yourself because you're not really able to get in your way once you're in the sleep realm. So right. a lot of times it can answer questions for you. So once, if anybody ever has a dream, if you ever wake up, keep a journal right by your bedside. And then when you wake up in the morning, journal about, you know, whatever your dream is about, and then try to assess it to see if there's anything that you could take away from that dream. Because a lot of times there are a lot of takeaways. They're not always just dreams. Some dreams are meaningless, but a lot of them do pose a lot of purpose. I'm all about that. I have a few dream journals kicking around the house and <laughs> it's interesting to when you do analyze your dreams and kind of say, Oh, that is what I'm feeling. And sometimes it brings things up that you didn't even know were there. Yeah. And sometimes dreams are like, what was that? I don't know about you, but I sometimes have dreams. Like there's a mall that I always go to in my dreams. So mm -hmm. it's like this reoccurring mall that I visit. <laughs> so it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. A little, a whole other world. And if you ever do want to interpret your dreams, I do have an episode with uh, the dream expert, Dr. Uh, Michael Lennox, that was on my show. So we were cool. discovering certain meanings in dreams too. So you might want to check that out if you haven't yet. I love that. Very cool. Yeah. So yeah. I know that you're a big Dolly Parton fan, and I know she's one of the people you would like to collaborate with. So I actually want to get into some Dolly Parton trivia right now. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to like full on, like full disclaimer, like I am the worst trivia person in the world. You never want to have me on your trivia team. And this will be oh an example. You could ask me questions about things I know inside out and I will just like freeze blank. I just am the worst trivia human. So okay. that's, that's my future. That's my, my disclaimer. It's okay because there's no pressure or anything like that. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you this question and okay. then you choose one of four answers that you think would be actually be the right, the correct answer for this question. Okay. So, this is fun. All right. So question one, where was Dolly Parton born? Ooh. A, Alabama, B, Mississippi, C, Atlanta, or D, Tennessee? D. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> one Re redeeming <laughs> myself. <laughs> Oh, please. We didn't even need that disclaimer. You already got it. <laughs> so question two, who was Dolly Parton's first celebrity crush? A, Kenny Rogers, B, Johnny Cash, C, Frank Sinatra, or D, Elvis? A? No. D? <laughs> no. You would think, right? Uh, it's actually B, Johnny Cash. Oh, there we go. See, always learning. Yeah, right. I was like, really? I, was Cash? I would think Elvis, you know, that's just my first thought because she's from Tennessee. So I'm like, right. No, I would think. <laughs> All right. I love it. So question three. In so in her song lyric, it says in here, you come again. Dolly sings just when you begun to get when just be, just when I have begun to get myself together, you blank right in the door. So fill in the blank. Do you think it is you began to walk in the door, skip in the door, waltz in the door, or slide in the door? Well, I don't know. I want to say the thing that I least think it is. <laughs> is it C? <laughs> waltz in the door? No. A? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Walk in the door. You got it. Like that. that just seems too fire, easy. Though. And this is why I'm bad at trivia because I hear I'm like, oh, I know that's, that's like the most 
common answer sounds right, but yeah, I always doubt myself. I don't listen to that inner voice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So on to question four. How many wigs do you think Dolly Parton owns? A, 3,000, B, 256, C, 700, or D, 365? Oh, D? Yes. Oh! <laughs> Again. <laughs> So Miss Dolly said that she likes to have a wig for every day of the year. So she's oh. like, I, I have 365 because I need to be a different girl every day of the week. So, yes. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Question five. Which Dolly Parton song reached number one on the country music billboard charts twice? Is it A, I Will Always Love You, B, Nine to Five, C, Island in the Stream, D, Jolene? A. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you were feeling this whole trivia. Oh my god! So unfortunately, I don't have any prizes, but hopefully, you know, Miss Dolly herself will hear this interview and be like, you know what? We're collabing now since you are my number one fan. So yes, three out of five ain't bad. <laughs> yeah, that was excellent. You did wonderful. Yeah, that was all so right. Fun. I like that. I know, I know. I have well, to- high pressure. High exactly pressure steak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't crack, though. <laughs> so, um, now, as a female artist, you have, I'm sure you've, have you ever encountered any male groupies? Has anybody, like, been outside your tour bus or outside your dressing room or anything like that? Well, there's been some odd ones, but <laughs> nothing, nothing remarkable to share. Just some weird comments, you know, weird emails, <laughs> weird, weird photos you know (laughs) oh man oh god were they like naked photos or they were just like (laughs) face photos (laughs) so face photos Uh, you know but you hear some crazy story there's some crazy stuff out there but no I'm fortunate not to have had anything Uh. traumatizing happen (laughs) because you know you always hear about a lot of men talking about all the the crazy groupie stories that they have or whatnot or you know a crazy fan outside their dressing room or someone that's trying to get into the concert and dressing up as the light person in order to get in there and stuff so I've always wanted to know like as a female artist like do you ever encounter any male groupies or anything (laughs) it's interesting yeah it's not like uh like in the 60s how there was all those you know, female groupies, yeah. <laughs> all those awesome rock bands, exactly. not like that. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> no crazies. So what are some uh, must-haves that you can't live without when you're touring or if even if you're traveling? Well, I'm the big essential oil girl. So I love having peppermint oil. That's one of my massive go-tos, just energizes you and it relaxes you. So really whatever you need it for, it, it's, it's there. Um, amino acids those are a a big thing in my world especially for performance endurance and and fitness just having making sure you know your muscles are getting the the fuel they need to stay active and your mind's alert that's that's important um my crystals so I have you know a little bag of seven crystals one for each chakra and I like to carry those around with me and sometimes bring it on stage too just tuck it underneath my mic stand (laughs) Those are some good handy dandy ones. I um, carry around crystals too, but one of my favorite crystals that I have is the black tourmaline for protection. Ah, yeah, I like that one too. Yeah. yeah. So um, what are uh, what's the process to your songwriting? It changes all the time. So it's not just, you know, I'm going to sit down and write a song. It's some days I'm, you know, in the shower and a, a line comes up and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, let's write a song about this. Mm-hmm. months later <laughs> and then sometimes you know we'll do a zoom right with people and mm-hmm. so we'll all kind of connect and share I have an idea about this or this is what's happening in my life or this is what's happening in my life and mm-hmm. you can kind of pick up on oh I'm feeling that too or I've been there or, you know I really like that idea and it's just a really collaborative experience so I think every single song I've written has been in a different kind of way (laughs) there's not just a a formula of you know a plus b equals c so yeah I I love that about songwriting for me is just that you know sometimes I can write to the piano sometimes I just write a melody sometimes I find a beat to write to so Mm -hmm. just uh I like the flexibility of songwriting 
Yeah. Do you ever have any like candles burning or do you like to have a lot of people around when you're songwriting or does it have to be, or do you just need like a clear room where it's just only you so you're able to focus on your songwriting? Oh, it's funny you say that. I picture just popped up on Facebook from like 16 years ago and it said, um, it was this photo of a candle on the carpet. And I remember I was at my dad's house at the time and I had some people over and we were songwriting Mm -hmm. and there was just one candle that was sitting on the basement floor Mm -hmm. on the carpet and it had leaked and so there was wax all over the carpet (laughs) and and we took a picture of it it just popped up on my Facebook yesterday as a as a memory I was like oh yeah we used to write around this little candle (laughs) (laughs) but now no no No, (laughs) like I'm over that (laughs) I love candles but it's not something that I need Mm -hmm. to write a song I think it's that's a cool you know what the Mm -hmm. next song I write next writing session I'm gonna light a bunch of candles and I'm gonna bring that energy back (laughs) you can feel the inner your inner zen can come out that's that's right I'm all about it (laughs) so would you ever collab with an artist from a different genre and if so what genre would it be for sure I love um I love collabing and I love mixing genres I think it's it's really cool Mm -hmm. I would love to do I don't know. There's so many different things I'd love to do. I, I really love like the club country vibe. So I just love remix. This isn't it's kind of a collab. I would say like DJs are artists in their own right. And it's like collaborating with some, some DJs, I think would be really cool to create something new, not a remix, but like a new sound for a country song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you ever do yeah, like, cool. yeah. Would you ever do like a hip hop country song? I know Snoop Dogg actually did a hip hop song, con- hip hop country song one time. Would yeah, you- I think that would be fun. I'd be totally open for it. Who I love you- who? Who would you actually want to collab with if it was uh, going to be a hip hop song? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know a name of. <laughs> Here's my trivia. Oh, <laughs> the ones that everybody knows. <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna Give work me two on options. That. <laughs> told you I'm really bad with names and trivia things. oh man this wasn't <laughs> trivial <laughs> oh my so goodness yeah, I'm not sure a hip hop I don't know it's just not my um it's not my genre of of listening so okay yeah we'll I go over know. a few artists after this show <laughs> yeah you know what if you could send me a list of like five I'll yeah. check them out and I'll let you know <laughs> I have a few in my head that I think will be awesome for you. So yeah, <laughs> like a Megan Thee Stallion song with Krista McGrath. I think that would be pretty dope since All I, right. yeah, I think that would be a, like a hot new single. Something you could put out for this okay. for next year. Okay. She, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I'm open. I am yes, open absolutely. to, uh, to all open to I all ideas. It. I love it. <laughs> So you host your own podcast called Artists Behind the Music. So what inspired you to start your own podcast? I love talking to people and I love hearing people's stories about what they've gone through and how they've overcome those different things. And I think sharing stories of struggle and fear and just the human experience allows us to connect. And I kind of touched on this already about just when you hear that somebody else is going through something, it makes you feel, you know, more human Mm -hmm. and less alone and less afraid. And so to be able to connect with so many different artists and, and on my podcast, uh, Crushing Chaos, I connect with women from all over the world that are entrepreneurs and the artists behind the music is more artist based. So focused on chatting with musicians from all over the world. And it's so cool that everyone has a very similar story, which kind of brings me back to that you know, that global human experience that we all have and a common fear is just not feeling good enough. And Mm -hmm. I love having conversations about that with people because I think that's a huge struggle for so many people to feel okay with who they are. And Mm -hmm. and once you hear like, oh, they're so confident or, you know, you see an artist you love and like, they're amazing. And you hear that they struggle with the same things that you do. It just kind of, you know, makes it feel okay. And it gives you a little bit of strength to to power through I think a little a little deeper but yeah con- connection I love connecting I love that I love that and speaking of connected you know it's very important for artists to stay connected with their fan base and I know with the pandemic a lot of you know musicians weren't really able to do that because they weren't able to tour and stuff like that mm-hmm. so what are some ways that you were able to stay connected with your fan base 
Yeah. So social media, I would say is just the best, the best way, but, you know, through the podcast that I put out weekly and through just engaging on social media in new ways and, you know, using TikTok and reels and stories and all those good things have been a really great, great tool. And then another thing I love doing is live streaming concerts. And that was something that we did, you know, twice a week when this all first started. So it was cool to hop on Facebook or Instagram live and just, you know, connect with the people watching and in a different way than maybe you normally would, but Mm -hmm. um, it's cool to still allow that process to still happen. Yeah, I love that. And so your song Game On made it to Sirius XM CBC Top 40 in Australia's MTV CMT Network. And you toured around the world with country legend John Cannon and Aaron Pinchot. So where do you, with all this level of success, where do you see yourself five years from now? Five years from now, you know, I just want to be doing what I love to do, what I'm doing now at a grander level, touring more, getting back on the road would be amazing, uh, continuing to release music. Honestly, if I can wake up in five years and be on a beach, mm. in my beach house somewhere and still do what I love, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be super happy. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Beach house. Let's, let's just put that out there. <laughs> the location you would want to be in? Like uh, Aruba? Would you like to go to Jamaica? I, would, I need to find a hot destination with a mild temperature so Mm -hmm. I don't like hot hot and I don't like cold cold Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I like just a nice 20 degree weather somewhere I haven't found this beach yet it's got to be out there somewhere Mm -hmm. so I'm looking for a beach with 20 to 24 degree weather oh okay you come to California (laughs) we have plenty of beaches out here. that's true (laughs) California is a good spot there's tons of beach houses out here Malibu Yeah. Totally. I would, I would go for a house in, in California. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So you're working on an EP, right? I am. Yes. So this week they're all going to be wrapped up and, and then we'll be ready to release looking at um, early 2022, oh. which is crazy to say 2022. That's right. That seems We're so almost- far away. I know, but we're literally almost there. I can't believe how fast this year has gone by. It's like, it's insane. Is that yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I think being at home so much too, is just kind of taken away the concept of time. Mm-hmm. I used to use traveling as a marker of like, Hey, I know I was here then. And I know I was there then. So that was kind of how I defined time. And, and now it's kind of like, Oh, I'm just home all the time. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's just been one constant day. Yeah, just like uh, me at this point, I'm just counting sheep. I'm like, I just yeah. want to go outside at this point. Anywhere is fine with me other than being in the house all day. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I hear you, girl. Yes. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today, Miss Crystal. It's been a pleasure to be able to have you on and learn so much more about you and your music. Yeah, it's been great being here. And I love your trivia. I, I appreciate being put on the spot. I really like that. <laughs> I really do. (laughs) You did excellent. Gets the blood flowing. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, right? Perfect. Well, let everybody know where they connect can connect with you and find your music. Crystal McGrath. If you just search that, um, you can find me Instagram, Facebook, so all the socials, all the good things. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Well, and for everybody else, I want to thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Vibe Selection. I am your host, Kyra. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can do so at I am Kyra Mahoney. Or if you like any Vibe Selection merchandise, you can get that at www.teespring.com slash Vibe Selection. Or if you'd like to donate to the Vibe Selection podcast, you can do so at www. Uh, patreon.com slash vibe selection once again i'm your host kyra stay safe stay healthy out there see you guys next week bye bye